Zimbabweans vote in an election this week that many hope could end a lengthy economic crisis in what was once considered one of Africa's most prosperous countries. Irene Mutero, a vendor on the streets of the capital Harare, is one of those who say what they want is change. Things are tough for everyone. I'm registered to vote and I'm going to vote. But hope is tempered by expectations that Wednesday's contest is skewed in favor of the ZANU-PF. The party has been in power for more than four decades. For most of that time, Robert Mugabe was at the helm. He led the violent seizure of white-owned farms in 2000. Zimbabwe has been in economic turmoil ever since. Mugabe was ousted in a military coup in 2017 and replaced by longtime ally Emerson Nangagwa. At his penultimate rally, Nangagwa said they need more time to build our motherland. We are trying to lift more and more of our people out of poverty into a higher quality of life. Mnangagwa won Zimbabwe's first post-Mugabe election in 2018, which was unsuccessfully challenged by the opposition. Political analyst Dr. Pedzasai Rouhania says this election will again be contentious. Of course, it's headed for another decision. It is very clear. How do you go into an election without a voter's role? That's a reference to one dispute in this election. The opposition Citizens Coalition for Change has taken the Electoral Commission to court to demand access to electronic copies of the voters' roll, so it can be searched and analysed. The Electoral Commission has said all parties have been given printed copies. The courts have yet to rule in what is one of several legal challenges mounted by the opposition ahead of the vote. Though there are 11 candidates vying for the presidency, the election is really a battle between the CCC's Nelson Chamisa, a 45-year-old lawyer and pastor, and 80-year-old Mnangagwa, who goes by the nickname The Crocodile. At a rally in Bulawayo, Chamisa said he had told Regional Bloc, the Southern African Development Community, that Mnangagwa was not preparing to win, but plotting to rig. He stole the election in 2018, but this time I will not accept to allow him to steal the election again. The opposition says its supporters are routinely arrested under Zimbabwe's tough public order laws, and that there have been cases of violent intimidation by ZANU-PF supporters. Police have blocked some of the opposition's rallies. They deny targeting bias and say rallies for both major parties have been stopped for reasons of public safety. A ZANU-PF spokesperson has denied allegations of voter intimidation and unfair electoral processes, accusing the opposition of being obsessed with criticizing the electoral process so that they have something to say after losing. Wilbert Mandinde of the Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum says it is not proper for members of the opposition to struggle to campaign. The human rights situation in Zimbabwe has been bad. Elections are meant to be something in which people look forward to, uh, in which people then go and exercise their rights to vote. Nevertheless, the opposition hopes it can defy the odds and win this time. They're counting on frustrations over the long-running economic crisis. Inflation is among the highest in the world, while only 30% of Zimbabweans hold formal jobs. Political analysts say young voters, who have never known a prosperous Zimbabwe, could play a significant role. One-sixth of the registered electorate are first-time voters.